Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Salute to all the Matrix University subscribers tuning in. You are appreciated. In this video, Matrix storyboard and comic book artist Steve Scross talks a little Matrix 4, as well as describing his own original journey down the rabbit hole. And if this is your first time down here, or you want to know about all things Matrix Media, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any yellow pilled content. Before we get into the Steve Scross interview, we have some more crew flexing Matrix 4 gear on social media. Stuntman Charlie Yoon posted this picture to his Instagram last week saying, quote, A special thanks to Keanu Reeves for this nice gift. 2020 was a hell of a year with ups and downs, but I was fortunate enough to leave my footprints in the Matrix universe. Another one checked off my bucket list. Feeling blessed. Can't wait to watch it by the end of the year. End quote. So while this photo may not have been quite as revealing as the Resurrections jacket, you can see that the code mentions both San Francisco and Berlin shooting locations. And you can help support this channel by ordering your own Matrix University gear at our Teespring shop. I'll leave a link in the description and in the comment section. In other Matrix 4 news, Trilogy composer Don Davis has confirmed that he is not signed on as part of the Matrix 4 production staff. Don, I know there has been or have been talks about the Matrix Part 4. Are you at liberty to disclose whether or not you have been approached to work on this picture? Well, I think I'm at liberty. I have not been approached. I am also very shocked and surprised that nobody has reached out to you about that. I'm really sorry to hear that. Well, uh, I haven't heard anything, so maybe you've heard something. All the Matrixologists with perfect attendance already knew that from the Tom Twyker Revealed video. Now on to the drawn and cornered interview with Matrix storyboard artist Steve Scross. Uh, I actually, I wanted to continue talking about uh, some of your earlier work. Uh, Lana Wachowski co-wrote Ecto Kid, and I saw somewhere yeah. that Lily was also unofficially involved. Uh, there's so much going on here between their involvement and Clyde Barker having his own line of books at Marvel. Now it's kind of hard to process. What, what oh, yeah, was Lily, that? Lily was, uh co-writing for sure but you know it was like in those days it was just like marvel you know it's just dealing it just got too complicated because lana had the relationship and so whatever but like i said it was nine months and uh then it was um you know the movie they sold their first scripts and had moved on but very, was, that, was that was that bound uh no they had sold a script called assassins so that was the first one made, and then they did some script do doctoring on some things, and then, um, yeah, Bound was the first movie they were able to get made, and then after that, somewhere around in there, they sold Matrix. And then that was this long process right. of getting that uh, made. Now, working with the Wachowskis so early in your career, walk us through that experience. Did you know them before the comic book stuff? No, uh, we were here basically like, you know, you know, how you are when you work at the big two is often you're just paired off, you know, you want to draw this, here's your writer. And that's how the relationship began, you know, and then we kind of got to know each other a little bit through uh, going to these events, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a good good relationship. And then when they the made movie stuff happen, they just kind of, uh, you know, um, called me up and they had a very specific idea about what they, what they wanted out of there storyboards and how it was going to be a part of the pitching process of the movie you know because in those days like cyberpunk was pretty fresh uh mm -hmm. back in the 90s and so they had to go to basically you know old men who ran warner brothers in those days like terry samuel and explain these concepts people were very funny they, they would read the scripts and they go well how do they get from the sewers to the city like you know they don't understand the jacking in and jacking out just kind of like couldn't quite figure out that uh, how that worked and uh, so they wanted a bunch of drawings and stuff to show, you know, basically kind of a slideshow of what it would be like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the tone of, of the film, film and that stuff. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine a, a movie like The Matrix was an easy pitch. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I didn't even test that great either. That was a big, another big process of people just not, they kind of liked it and then they kind of bring a guy in who like asks all these questions and makes them, you know, and then they start thinking about it and they're like, you're right, I didn't understand this and that. Maybe it's not so good, but it, it's a hard movie to absorb, but I think emotionally the audience was really with it. Right. And then they, so, um, uh, anyway, it was just a funny, it was one of the things I got to experience. Uh, was, was that how it was just like very uh, depressing sort of initial <laughs> reaction 
with this audience. When you were storyboarding it initially, uh, you obviously got to see a lot of this world before anyone else did. At the time that you were working on it, before any audience members had a chance to even see a single frame of this movie, did you have a sense of like, holy shit, this is going to be big? Or were you just too close to the project to see it that way? Yeah, it's funny. No, you don't feel that way because what, what you experience is like how much of a crapshoot everything is because you're, <laughs> right. there, you're working on it and you think it's cool. And everyone who working on a movie is working hard uh, and you're working on your little piece and, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be cool, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then they go to meetings and then they get rejected. And uh, like I worked on The Matrix for like, you know, seven months over a couple of years, you know, go away, come back a couple months on. A couple, and you would leave. And every time I left the movie, it looked like it was, wasn't going to happen, you know. And then some time would go by and then they would get a little bit more development money and they'd be able to get some more office space again and they'd bring me out and then they'd hire a couple more artists and that would go for a couple months and then that would fall over. And so when it finally got green lit, I hadn't even been working on it for a while, you know? And so you're like, oh, wow, that's great. It's going to happen now. You know? But you leave, you kind of never know. I I didn't, I sort of expected that they would just go and kind of, it would get made, but it was a lot of, um, you know, it's a battle up a hill. Now, since the Wachowskis came from comics uh, and, you know, worked with you previously, did you find that they had an appreciation for the storyboard process and conceptual stages more than some other filmmakers might? Oh yeah, they were, a lot of the times storyboards are just, you know, they're just meant to be a blueprint for something else, you know, you know, something to start, start with. And, um, but they were very, they would have really had uh, specific ideas they wanted carried out and they really wanted the, the boards to be faithful to those things. And that's, that's what uh, was kind of different about the process that uh, you can mm -hmm. kind of hold up the storyboards and they kind of line up with what you see on screen. Uh, in later years, uh, after the Matrix movies, they've gotten a lot, a lot looser, I think, and it's it's uh, pretty cool. It can be a lot. They're so skilled at filmmaking now; they can make a lot of things happen quickly. You know. Now you're working on Matrix Four right now. Uh, I don't want to be annoying and ask you for plot details or anything like that. But what's it been like to return to that world, uh, especially after having the former films having such a major cultural impact? Um, yeah, it was great. I think what's cool about the, the new one is that, um, you know, it, it couldn't have, it's great that it happened so much later, uh, 20 years later than the original one. And I think, you know, as a filmmaker and as a creator, Alon is a lot different, obviously. And, and so the film has the integrity of the matrix world is there and it's as cohesive as it, as it was before, but uh, it, it opens up in, in new and different and exciting ways that uh, make a lot of sense and are really, um, I think, rewarding. And that's what I found about it. And this, so the script, it, the movie is, I don't know, it's, I think it's going to be a worthy, um, you know, a fourth inst installment that uh, takes you to some, some fun, fun places and, uh, you know, gets, gets pretty emotional too. A Doc Frankenstein is a major work of yours that was done with the Wachowskis as well, but also created with comic book legend Jeff Darrow who I understand is a close friend of yours. Now, can you talk about how that all went down? That That's an interesting room to be in. I know, Darrow, but you know, I could take him or leave him, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Jeff is a great guy. And uh, no, yeah, we had so much fun working in, uh, that was one of the best parts of um, working on those movies was we had an office together and just a hilarious guy. And there were constant shenanigans. Uh, one of the things Jeff used to mm -hmm. do uh, all the time is I would great you know there'd be a meeting you'd, you'd have like a few days you do a bunch of boards and you go for a meeting and get some notes on them and so I would do my have my you know little all my notes all my boards you know uh, stacked up and ready to go and I'd go to the bathroom before I hit the meeting and then while I was in the bathroom Jeff would come over and he would draw like all these <laughs> all over my uh, storyboard <laughs> you know would be getting hit in the face with the and all this stuff and so then I would take my boards and go straight into the meeting and we'd be sitting there going through the board and then suddenly I had that. And and then we would have these graphic drawings. <laughs> these basically these drawings with all this. They were in pencil, right? So they came right off, but that was funny. We did that a lot. Now, speaking of like uh, going back to sort of the Doc Frankenstein stuff, I, I, the book is, is kind of amazing, yet it seems to be uh, a bit under the radar considering the talent involved. Do you have any thoughts on why that could be? 
Well, you know, we published it themselves. They used a guy they knew that, uh, to put it out. And I mean, you need to listen. If you want to really make it in comics, you have to come out. You have to come out on time. Uh, you can't just disappear. You know, um, mm-hmm. uh, killers like, take a little slice of their budget off and devote that to you. And if you don't show up the following month or whatever or never, then, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, burn on them. So, yeah, we weren't great at the publishing part of it, but I think the book is good. So it made it out there, but I, I think maybe it was just meant to be, a, you know, kind of a, a, you know, a, a let's say a, a boutique vintage. Right. Did you guys come up with the idea while you were working on The Matrix as well? or? Nero had that idea years ago and when we were in our office together chatting. Um, he would talk about it. He'd tell me about the characters and whatnot. And so I said, Jeff, do you, would you mind if I if I made this into a comic? Because he kept saying he'd never get around to it. He just wanted to do the cowboy. And he said, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And he said, but I don't want to be involved in it. Here are my ideas. You know, but you can, you know, just show me whatever you got. But, you know, if he was very uh, open about, you know, he didn't want, uh, he was very good about uh, creative freedom, not wanting to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, or the ship or whatever and then after that a couple years you know some time passed i did a few pages and then the wachowskis heard about it and uh, they wanted to be involved and that's it came out of that and they they had a much better take at that point uh they had a good take at um on frankenstein and uh, we did that story we stand on guard was my first comic back and i kind of stayed in comics since then except for the little detour uh last year with the matrix uh, uh fourth film Mm-hmm. But you know, I kind of like to like comics the most and want to spend my time doing that. So that's what I'm trying to focus on. Was that a, was that a project that uh, Brian K. Vaughn came to you with or was it something that you guys were kind of developing together? Well, it was funny, you know, I was um, in L.A. and I was at this uh, early screening of Jupiter Ascending. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was there. He was invited because they know him and they like him, like his work. So they invited him and he happened to be the other comic book guy there. So we started chatting and then he kind of at the end of the conversation was like, well, if you want to do work, you know, here's, you know, give me a call. And then I kind of just, you know, he tried to leave and I just kind of dove at his foot and <laughs> pressed the floor. And then he, you know, and then uh, a few months later, uh, yeah, I finished all, all the movie stuff I was doing. And What I like most about listening to Steve Scross interviews is that he's truly had a front row seat to the Wachowski's entire career. Also during this interview, Scross mentioned his relationship with Matrix concept artist Jeff Darrow, and they both shared an interview together that you can find in the Wolverine Connection video here on this channel. Don't forget to sign up for the Project Matriculated Premier Party event, and remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream, that is self-awareness.